Um, good evening, Mr. President, members of the board, and Dr. Swanson. Uh, before I start my prepared remarks, I did want to just take a second to recognize uh, a bunch of staff from Flynn that are here tonight. I was quite surprised to see the numbers, so I just wanted to say thank you to all of them. I'm honored to be here to present to you tonight and excited to share with you some of the great things that are happening at Flynn this year. Each day, 272 students walk through our doors to receive the world-class competency-based education that only Westminster Schools offers. As you know, this alone is no easy feat, but we are proud of our efforts towards providing every kid a learning experience where their education is personal. The start to any school year is crazy, so you can say we've been busy these past few months, but it is a good busy, and I can confidently report to you tonight that we are rocking and rolling. However, this year is not just any, nor any ordinary school year. As you are aware, Flynn is, was selected to become a Marzano Academy. This is an incredibly exciting thing. However, it also requires a lot of work. By slightly adjusting work schedules on Mondays and Fridays, we are conducting weekly professional development workshops geared toward building our capacity as a faculty, staff, and leadership team toward specific elements of becoming a high reliability school. Dr. Marzano himself has visited the school, toured classrooms, and met with staff. He is also providing personal consult time with each teacher to help ensure that they meet their professional development goals. We speak often as a staff about how lucky we are to be at Flynn and to be a part of the opening of a Marzano Academy. And speaking of faculty and staff, did you guys know that Flynn Elementary has the best? I know many of my principal colleagues might disagree, but we do. And although my time at Flynn has been short, it didn't take long to realize that this group of people is truly special. This sentiment is only growing stronger for me, and I am excited to see what we will accomplish as a team. Our teachers are mission-driven, motivated, and most importantly, happy to be at school each day. Smiling is contagious. I know this because I often find my sm myself smiling from ear to ear simply by having the day-to-day -day interactions with the people I work with. It is my honor to be a part of such a team and to serve as their principal. Which leads me to a final thought of introduction. I started my education career at Regis Jesuit High School, a private, suburban, college preparatory school. And although my time at Regis was wonderful, at the end of the day, I knew I needed to be somewhere different. Dr. Swanson often says that it's easy to be a good doctor in a well town. I've experienced this firsthand. It is. And although all kids, regardless of background or upbringing, deserve a good education, I believe our nation's education system is often designed to ensure that the Regis kids are first in line. This, in my opinion, is wrong. And although I don't have the power to change this, I do have a choice as to where I work. So five years ago, I left Regis to come to Westminster. And since then, I've been a district coordinator, an assistant principal at Colorado STEM Academy, and a principal at both Tennyson and now Flynn. These experiences have each shaped me in different ways, but what they have all shown me is that we're doing something really special here in Westminster, and I'm very lucky to be a part of it. The Flynn Falcons can only fly to great heights if we all work in concert. Toward this end, we use the acronym SOAR to guide our thoughts, words, and actions. Safety, ownership, attitude, and respect are the guiding principles that all decisions uh, stem from. But instead of me telling you about each, we thought it would be better for you to hear what SOAR means from some of our Flynn Flyers themselves. Go ahead. Okay. Is it? I'm... It's not, yeah. Okay. I'll do it. The first thing of SOAR is safe. When and the, that first door is being safe. And how you be safe is you not jumping off of a slide. <laughs> the Owen SOAR stands for ownership for learning. The A in SOAR stands for attitude. And when I have a good attitude, I learn. All right, Roxas, uh, what is the R and how does it help you be successful? Respect. Um, if you respect someone, they will respect you too. If you don't respect someone, then you won't be able to do mu that much. <laughs> uh, 
Every school every year must ask three questions if they want to be strategic in achieving their goals. And Flint is no different. At the start of the year, we asked ourselves three questions, these three questions, and the following slides will show you what we came up with. And I asked some of the students to, uh, to draw some posters of the questions, so that's what you'll see in the upcoming slides here. Um, so where are we? They say Flynn. So, um, <laughs> they're right. Yeah, they're right, exactly. <laughs> All right, where are we in terms of our data? Um, we are incredibly pleased with the increase in our school performance framework score and rating this year. Although a 47.9 and improvement rating is not where we ultimately want to be, it is a marked improvement from previous years, and we are excited to build upon this success moving forward. And the best part is our improvement rating rate reset Flynn's accountability clock, which has been a celebration indeed. It is true that we still need to improve, but one area we excelled at last year was literacy growth. As you can see on the left-hand side, all grade levels and all disaggregated groups scored at or above state expectations. As you know, on growth charts, blue is good. Blue moves kids forward and blue catches kids up. We had a lot of blue in literacy last year, and we are anticipating repeat growth this year. It also bears mentioning that although our math growth was not blue, we also saw marked improvement across all grade levels and disaggregated groups, and we intend to have that column be blue next year as well. Question two, where are we going? It's hard to know what your next step should be if you don't know where you're going. As a school, we made a commitment of 725 scaled score in math and a 733 scaled score in literacy and a 55th percentile for growth in both subject contents. We believe if we achieve these commitments that Flynn will be doing its part in helping the Westminster Public Schools achieve its 2018 performance challenge goals. But as I mentioned earlier, Flynn is also focused on becoming a Marzano Academy, the second one in existence. Although, as Dr. Marzano tells it, because we are already operating in a competency-based system, have adopted the use of proficiency scales and use Empower, a standards-referenced reporting system, when we open our doors next school year, we will be uh, well, well ahead of the game. Another aspect of becoming a Marzano Academy is also working toward and ultimately becoming a high reliability school. There are five levels of high reliability schools, hierarchically ordered, meaning a school must be certified level one before it can be certified level two. This falls in line with our own CompC-based system where one level must be mastered by a student before moving on to the next. At the same time, also in our CompC-based system, where kids work on multiple levels at the same time, the high reliability school status requires schools to work on all levels simultaneously, as each level is critical to the overall success of student learning. As you can see here, there are currently hundreds of schools working their way up the high reliability school level certification. I want to draw your attention to level five for one minute, though. You'll notice that currently zero schools have achieved level five high reliability school status. Well, that's about to change. <laughs> Flynn Elementary fully intends to become the first level five high reliability school in the world. So, how do we do this? With level one, we are already conducting student, staff, and parent surveys to determine our strengths and areas of improvement. We are implementing consistent school-wide routines and procedures to increase safe and orderly operations that are conducive to learning. We have expanded our positive behavior intervention system, and we have created a professional learning community structure to help achieve all level one elements. In addition, one of the faculty book studies this year is over motivating and inspiring students, a Dr. Marzano book who he co-authored with Daryl Scott, the father of Rachel Scott, who was the first student killed in the Columbine tragedy, and also the founder of Rachel's Challenge. One of our goals as a Marzano Academy will be to incorporate this organization's great work into our daily instruction. 
Level two, as mentioned previously, we implemented a weekly professional development focused on Marzano best practices and high reliability school certification. We are conducting staff book studies and have implemented a mentor and peer coaching program focused on the use of instructional rounds. Staff members have committed themselves to continuous improvement this year by participating in professional development goal setting that goes beyond simply just writing goals. Working off the 43 instructional elements of the new art and science of teaching, every faculty member is consistently working toward three professional goals, as well as tracking their own development with their own data notebooks. This professional development system is more intentional, robust, and meaningful than any I've seen in practice before, and I do believe will yield high results toward achieving level two high reliability status. Level three. One way we are attempting to ensure our curriculum is guaranteed is by implementing a focused instructional block into our daily schedule. In this block, all core instruction stops so that each kid can receive focused instruction that directly meets their needs. So our second language learners receive their culturally diverse linguistic instruction, while our special education students receive their additional interventions, while all other kids work with their teachers and instructional paraprofessionals on specific learning items that are personalized for them. In addition, administration runs three-week monitoring cycles with teachers to monitor learning progress and to have crucial conversations that are data-backed about instructional strategies. Finally, we um, are continuing to develop and refine our unit plans. Level four. The work Flynn is doing this year toward level four is by ensuring every teacher is completing weekly empower entries of student learning, as well as building an iterator reliability of what constitutes competency across all classrooms. We are also increasing our use of playlists and continuing our use of and capacity with proficiency scales. Finally, we are increasing both student and parent use of Empower, as we know the tool becomes more powerful when all users are actively monitoring and uh, looking at academic progressions. Finally, with level five, we are continuing to refine our CompC-based practices with tighter performance band groupings in classrooms, which ultimately reduces the need for differentiation strategies. We are also ensuring that time is the variable in student learning, providing additional time and resources for students needing it, but also not allowing traditional time frames such as semesters or school years to impede those students who are progressing faster. Looking forward, I will be presenting you all a plan toward the end of the fall about the upcoming launch and implementation um, of the Marzano Academy in 2018, so stay tuned. And uh, thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions for you. Thank you, Dr. Cosina. Very welcome. Um, board, Mr. McCoy, I bet you have a question. <laughs> I actually don't have a question, uh, more comments, because one, I have a feeling that we're gonna see a lot of you in the, <laughs> this coming yes. year and the next year in regards to uh, everything that's being implemented and knowing that the board is uh, looking closely as well, as well as the administration, yourself and your staff on the Marzano Academy and uh, that approach. Um, the one thing I would make a comment, I in conversation with parents in the community um, and it's not just parents at Flynn and so this is this is a uh, a nudge for the, our district as a whole but people are asking que questions as what is Marzano Academy is what is the lab school what does that mean and so uh, making sure that we start getting out in front of some of those because I mean it is by all means this was a lot of accu speak as Dino always refers um, and bringing it down to the level where we're like we all understand it and our all of the light bulbs go off in our head I'm like all right I understand what we're doing and I get where we're going but you have a lot of work in front of you so I'm gonna remain quiet and good luck okay. Anybody else? Um, how was your year gone transitioning between schools? It's been going well. I mean, you know, every school has its own unique identity and character. And um, when you come into that environment, it's, it's kind of a unique dance as a principal because you, you want to respect what's in place and you want to get to know the building. Um, at the same time, you also, want to have uh, your vision 
take hold immediately. And so, you know, it's been one of those dances the last couple of months. And as I'm getting to know the community and the students and the faculty, um, it's been uh, a wonderful experience. And and um, and these guys hear me say it all the time. I just uh, I couldn't feel luckier to be at the school that I'm at. And I think we got um, the ingredients to really do something special. Good. And. With respect to the Marzano Academy, what do you as a principal um, hope to hope to get from it? What do you hope it brings to not only Flynn, but to the Flynn students and families and to the school district as a whole? Oh, we don't have enough time to answer that question. Do you? <laughs> um, Spark note it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think I'm going to probably, because I don't want to get into, we don't have time for specifics, I think what I'll generally speaking say is that one of the challenges public education has across every single school district in America is we have done the same thing for a long time, oftentimes because it's what we've always done. And, um, and that's a hard norm to break. And I think that what's, when I think about what Marzano Academy could be, when we think about the potential is we can really try to take research-based practices that we know work and with a mission to try to implement them across an entire school district. And I know that Dr. Marzano himself is thinking nation and world, um, but we'll start, we'll start local here, that we really do have an opportunity to do something special where we start to rethink the way that we have kids learn. And I'm not going to say deliver instruction because it's going to be a lot more about how do kids interact with information as they are learning that information. And we can design uh, instruction to have that be in a way that's a lot more meaningful for those kids. And as you know, when something's meaningful in your learning, you're far more likely to remember and retain that information than if you're simply regurgitating it back for a test. And so we'll go into specifics later, but um, one of the things that Marzano, as an example, would like to do with this is he wants to have us create a self-system of learning, which is, um, you know, we have our content systems, which is the, the standards, what we get tested on. But then there's also cognitive systems, which is how do we think, critical thinking, higher order thinking skills. But then beyond that, there's metacognitive skill sets, which is how do we think about our thinking? And we don't do a lot with schools on that. We, we do a lot of content, a little bit of cognitive, and not a lot of metacognitive. But Dr. Marzano wants to take it further. He wants to combine all of those into a single package and create what he calls a self-system of learning. And an idea of that would be that every kid in a Marzano Academy has a personal project every year where that project, they're learning, but within that project-based learning, they're also giving back to their community. And the idea being that that learning then has a purpose greater than self, and that because it has that purpose greater than self, that learning will be far more robust and meaningful and ultimately will stick. It's a fantastic answer. Yeah, it was. Thanks. You must have a PhD or something. Yeah. <laughs> I'm watching some parents in the audience go, okay, when is this going to be in my kid's school? <laughs> I'm, I move to adjourn. <laughs> <laughs> So, well, good. Any other questions, gentlemen? That was a good response. All right. Hearing none, thank you, Dr. Cosina. Thank you. Have a good school year. Thank you, Dr. Grenham.